We're a few minutes late. Thank you very much. The City of San Marino appreciates your attendance and video conference and everybody who's here today um, greatly and for your patience in working with us through new procedures to get uh, the community involved, public comments, as well as information out. And we'll talk about things today. So thank you very much. The city appreciates your attendance. I think I said that. Uh, regular meetings are held the second Wednesdays of every month, typically, and adjourned meetings are held on the last Friday of every month at 8.30. In compliance with the American Disabilities Act, as well as other, uh, let's say, guidance from the governor's office, um, we have modified this meeting. And if you have other accommodations or modifications that are needed, please contact the city clerk's office uh, prior to the meeting. Um, would everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Huang? Here. Councilmember Jacobowski? Here. Councilmember Tall? Here. Vice Mayor Yudi? Here. Mayor Shepard Rami? Here. Um, I'm going to make a brief announcement. Given the strict social distancing requirements that are in place now, we encourage uh, those members of the public who want to address the City Council today to call or video conference into the meeting. Teleconference and video streaming instructions have been made available on the flyer located on the table by the entrance, posted on the social media, as well as distributed as part of the updated agenda. Under the authority of California Health and Safety Code Section 101040-101085 and 120175, the County of Los Angeles Health Office orders, members of the public should not attend this meeting if you you are experiencing symptoms of respiratory illness, including fever or cough. All attendees at today's meeting who remain for more than 10 minutes should be separated by others by six feet. <laughs> uh, the posting of the agenda has been done 24 hours prior to each special meeting at the following locations at City Hall, the Coral Public Library, and the Recreation Department. The special meeting is also posted on the city's website. Pursuant to Governor Newsom's Executive Order N-2520, members of the City of San Marino City Council or staff may participate in this meeting via the teleconference. In the interest of maintaining appropriate social distancing, the City is working on making the meeting available via a web link. The City posted that link today. And given, I don't think we need to talk about all this again. Do you want me to announce the meeting ID or the numbers that are no, on this? No, it's available, it, it's okay. available okay. on the um, flyers. So at this time we welcome public comment. If there's anybody, we will first go to people in the room and then should anybody uh, online wish to make a public comment, we will open up. So that will be our process. We do have members of the public here today. Um, so would anybody like to comment or make a public comment at this time? I see none, then we will see if there's anybody online who would like to speak at this time and make a public comment on an item that's not the agenda or on a subject that's not part of the agenda. City clerk is checking to see, if there's checking any. to see if there are any public comments requested. I do not have anyone requesting to speak. All right, then we will close public comment, general public comment at this time and go to our new uh, order of business, item number one, consideration of a resolution number R2009, proclaiming the existence of a local emergency concerning the COVID-19 virus. Is that correct? Is there an issue? Just checking our web. Okay. okay. Um, staff report, please. Yes, good afternoon, Mayor Shepard Romney, council members. Um, we are in the midst of an unprecedented crisis in our lifetime. Uh, there is no precise rule book that exists for how to maneuver our way through this situation. We are incredibly lucky to have a wealth of experience as part of our executive team to provide you with information to guide you as you make decisions 
We are especially privileged to be guided by our designated emergency manager, which as you know is Fire Chief Mario Rueda. Uh, his 35 year plus career with LA Fire has prepared him to be an expert in this area at least as much as we can possibly expect at this time and we, we really are very lucky to have him helping guide our decisions. <clears throat> The city, uh, at this historic time, as you know, has already enacted many measures to protect our San Marino community and to do our part in slowing the spread of COVID-19. Some of those measures include closing the library and Stoneman, which is also a recreation program, canceling all non-essential events, and limiting city hall access to essential services only and only with appointment. Uh, this is very much in keeping with what our neighbor cities are doing. Circumstances are changing rapidly to to say the least that is quite an understatement but my colleagues in other cities are enacting similar measures to the ones that we have been enacting unfortunately there will likely be more actions coming this is likely to get worse before it gets better the sacrifices that are required by all of us right now during the situation are not comfortable to put it mildly but are certainly necessary to that end, staff recommends that the City Council proclaim a local emergency. At this point, I'm going to turn uh, the meeting over to Fire Chief Rueda, who will walk you through some information related to the novel coronavirus. And then we'll turn the meeting over to Stephanie Cower, City Attorney, to walk you through the legal ramifications of declaring a state of emergency. And then we will be available for whatever questions that you have. Uh, good afternoon, Council. Uh, this presentation is intended to provide a brief update and some background on the rationale for the uh, local proclamation and the, just a brief overview of the protective actions that we've taken as a city uh, to mitigate the impacts of this disease and uh, to protect our residents. <clears throat> so uh, what is the real concern? I've had a number of residents ask me about this. Is this overblown? Um, I, I can tell you no. Uh, this new strain uh, spreads easily, uh, can lead to a high number of infected uh, people, and it has already uh, led to the impacts of, on our schools, on our businesses, government, health care, etc. Uh, coronavirus is part of a large family of viruses that cause illnesses uh, all the way from the common uh, flu, common cold, to more severe uh, coronaviruses such as the uh, Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome and uh, SARS, which we saw uh, years ago, the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Both are much more deadly than the current um, coronavirus that we're looking at. COVID-19 or coronavirus is a new strain that was discovered in 2019. Uh, it hadn't been previously identified in humans. Uh, that's the novelty of this. Uh, so again, why the concern? Um, it's, uh, it's unknown. It's unknown what the impacts were going to be, how virile it is, uh, how deadly it is. Uh, there's no vaccine. And uh, as we've heard over and over, it does have the potential to overwhelm the hospitals because this is a respiratory illness that uh, uh, severely impacts about 8% of the people that actually get it. 81% uh, were told uh, of the folks in China that uh, did um, uh, get the virus uh, were very mild impacts, 8% severe impacts, and they did have a fatality rate of about 2 to 4% is what they're finding, which is much more significant than the seasonal flu that we have. Uh, the symptoms are flu-like symptoms, fever, and uh, obviously respiratory illness. Uh, a persistent cough. Uh, testing, uh, well, there's been much to be made uh, nationally about the availability of testing. In our county, testing is still at the direction of a physician. And you'll be directed either to public health labs or private labs that are now undergoing testing. Uh, most people are not candidates for testing uh, based on the current guidance of the public health department. So there's been a number of uh, conference calls uh, by anybody that uh, has a conference line, it, it seems. Uh, the, um, the one we've been taking is the most accurate and the most, uh, the, uh, most accurate to rely on has been the public health. And the mayor and I have sat through a number of uh, public health briefings. Um, she's been uh, very active, probably 
um, you know, more active than me on some of them, but uh, latest was Monday, March 16th. That was yesterday where the uh, new uh, orders of the public health officer were uh, announced. Uh, we've been leaning in for about the last uh, three to four weeks, um, mostly because of the uh, the angst amongst, amongst our, our uh, emergency uh, service providers, both police and fire. Uh, this was a serious concern early on. Uh, protective measures were published uh, nearly five weeks ago for uh, responders, and, and that has been evolving. Uh, protocols have been evolving, and new references for firefighter paramedics to follow have also evolved and are in place today. Um, and the police department has been uh, right there with us with uh, understanding what the precautions are that are necessary, uh, what the disease can do, and, and how to protect themselves and their family. Uh, so this is our current situation. Uh, as of yesterday, our, our local situation was 94 cases in L.A. County and one death. Uh, this is a very difficult uh, uh, set of numbers to maintain accuracy because it, was, it is continually evolving and it's being reported by a number of, of folks. But this is from the L.A. County Public Health website as of yesterday. And, uh, and I do uh, try to put this in perspective. This is in a county of 10 million people uh, that we have uh, 94 confirmed cases and one death. I, I can tell you from personal experience, our firefighters uh, have responded to a number of people in town that are that are sick and they're isolating at home. Um, could be influenza, could be a number of things, but um, that is occurring in every city. Um, and the protocol from uh, our public health agency has been to, unless they are uh, seriously ill, they are asking them not to come to the emergency rooms. They are isolating them at home. Uh, and don't call until you're, until you're really sick. So uh, the city has taken actions. Uh, last week, public ev events were canceled. Um, our preschool and after, after school care was closed at Stoneman. Coral Library was uh, first limited and then now closed. Recreation programs are closed. And uh, the San Marino uh, Unified School District has closed to all. Not only students, but teachers were sent home. Uh, what's happened uh, from our uh, public health officer is there's been a prohibition placed on indoor and outdoor events, public or private, where more than 50 people are expected. Uh, events that don't reach that threshold, uh, like this one, social distancing to be enforced, hand washing, and warning signs posted. Uh, our restaurants, our food facilities countywide have been closed to take out only or delivery. All bars, nightclubs, um, wineries, breweries closed if they don't serve food, gyms, fitness centers, movie theaters, live performances. Uh, all were uh, placed as orders as of yesterday, March 16th, by the public health officer. I would say if people don't take these um, uh, restrictions seriously, we should prepare for further, uh, further, uh, you know, disruptions and further orders by the health officer. Uh, there are additional things that other jurisdictions have taken um, to, to slow and prevent the spread of this disease. So this is the uh, uh, graphic you've seen in a number of places and why flattening the curve uh, uh, matters in the natural course of infectious spread. Uh, there's a sharp increase, a peak, and then a decrease. Uh, after viewing the situations in other countries, our, our experts are advising that we now we now have the opportunity to prevent the spread and and flatten the curve of this pandemic. Introducing the measures such as hand washing, social distancing, restrictions on public events will all help prevent the spread of this uh, disease. Um, So uh, what has happened uh, locally uh, in our preparations, the city of San Marino, uh, along with the school district, have been meeting for, 
for a number of weeks now. We, we regularly have a Monday meeting with the Huntington Library and the school district. We're really working to uh, reduce the impacts of closures and see where we can collaborate and uh, coordinate. All the campuses have been closed and uh, we're and at the Huntington Library everything's been closed except for the gardens. What's happened nationally is the president declared a state of a uh, declared a national emergency. The state of California has declared an emergency. The counties declared an emergency. The public health officer in LA County declared a health emergency. Um, that proclamation that the county uh, uh, proclaimed covers all cities. Um, there are certain things that our proclamation that Stephanie will talk about. Our proclamation actually will help. Our city, and if we, in the event that we do have to take additional measures, um, the chief and Contra and I have been through, I think, a number of sig significant emergencies and disasters. And I think, as I think about those uh, crises, uh, this one is certainly different. But the one thing we can't get back, just like those other disasters that I've responded to, is time. Uh, the time to get people out of the way in an emergency, the time to take actions to prevent uh, further uh, illness, uh, death, destruction. Uh, you can't gain that back. And I think uh, that time is, in a lot of uh, instances, is unrecoverable. And again, as uh, uh, Dr. Marlowe said, um, well, these protective actions are certainly a sacrifice uh, on our city, our residents, uh, they're terribly unsettling, uh, not comfortable. You know, hoping that things are going to get better is really not a appropriate strategy for any of us. Um, so that's uh, not a strategy that we could certainly entertain. And uh, that concludes my presentation and any questions. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council members. Um, the adoption of the proposed resolution proclaiming a local emergency will allow the city manager to take swift actions necessary to address or mitigate the impacts of COVID-19 and those impacts that may occur on the city's operation and services. It also allows the City Council to ratify emergency regulations to prevent the spread of illness should that become necessary. Finally, it allows the city to take, the, um, take advantage of state and federal funding and other resources as necessary to address issues within the city. There is one modification to the resolution in front of you that I wish to point out. We noticed this at the last minute, but if you look at page one of the resolution and you count to the seventh whereas, whereas as of March 16, 2020 across the globe, there are more than 130,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, resulting in more than 4,000 deaths worldwide. That was inadvertently left in, so you can go ahead and strike out that whereas clause. Instead, um, the more accurate statistical uh, fact is the whereas right above it, um, which is already in the resolution, and that says, whereas as of March 14, 2020, Across the globe, there were more than 140,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, resulting in more than 5,000 deaths worldwide. And that concludes my presentation on legal ramifications. I'm available for any questions you may have. All right, thank you very much, um, Dr. Marlowe, Chief Pereira, and the City Attorney Cal. Um, are there any questions from council at this time for, about any of the staff reports? I'll start with uh, Council Member Wong. Mr. Um, Chief, um, so what is the first responder doing differently now? I mean, when they, when they get a call, I mean, are they wearing a hazmat suit or anything like that? So what we did early on was uh, required uh, a uh, face shield uh, mask and gloves, and then a gown if we suspected that they had flu-like symptoms. Um, that was um, a few weeks later. The our local EMS agency and actually the CDC recommended those same protocols for uh, first responders. So 
those are the protective measures that our people take uh, any time that uh, they're uh, dealing with some anybody with flu-like symptoms. The other thing that has occurred is that our dispatch center in Verdugo, they're actually asking screening questions. So if somebody has traveled outside the country, is exhibiting flu-like symptoms, has been in uh, close uh, uh, touch with anybody suspected of the coronavirus, uh, they are alerting firefighters, and in our case, we're alerting our police officers that this may be a suspected COVID-19 case. Uh, we will ask those people, if they can, to walk outside, and then we limit the number of responders that actually make that assessment. When that assessment is made, we contact the, our base hospital, which is Huntington Memorial. We do a screening with the hospital. If the patient doesn't require transport, uh, we do not, we will tell the patient, you do not require transport to an emergency room. They won't do any further definitive care for you. It is best to self-isolate. If they insist on being transported, we will do so. Uh, and that is the uh, protective measures that we're taking. Uh, and the police officers have been given also uh, same protective gear in the event they encounter either a patient before us or a suspect. It's exhibiting flu-like symptoms. Um, I think like um, Arcadia and South Pasadena and the Huntington Hospital, they all have like cases. Uh, were we involved in any of those cases by any chance? And, no, and those, those, are, those may not be known to the fire department. The only time we would know if somebody had uh, a case of coronavirus is if we actually responded and transported them to the hospital. There, like I st as I stated earlier, there may be many people that are isolating at home that are positive for the coronavirus, but they're going through their 14 days of, of, um, of uh, their, the cycle of the virus, just like they would the flu without um, hospital intervention or, or medical intervention. Yeah, I mean, the only death, uh, death that we have in LA County so far uh, was in Walnut, and I heard that the paramedics, uh, they had to be quarantined after they were involved with that case. Uh, I am unaware of any firefighters in LA County that were quarantined. We've had some that were isolated, uh, awaiting testing, but uh, I'm not aware of any that were quarantined. Thank you. Council Member Jacobowski. Thank you. Thank you for your reports. Um, Chief, uh, you didn't specifically address it, but I wanted to ask, um, we heard the governor recommend that seniors and those with compromised systems um, limit their outside activities. Um, I have been asked about this, and maybe we could just sort of have this as part of our record. Um, what is your belief or thoughts about people going out and either walking animals, walking, getting exercise on the public streets? Well, I, I'm not an epidemiologist, but I, I have uh, read the, um, the information and um, Dogs and cats and domestic animals don't carry this virus. It's really people-to-people uh, -people transmission. Um, so provided they're maintaining all their distancing and, and not shaking hands and using the precautions, uh, I don't think there's any issue right now with those uh, people that either the elderly, uh, immune deficient, or, or have some underlying um, illness or pregnant women, which are the three sort of risk categories, uh, really um, doing anything outside, um, provided they're not interacting with other people. Other people may be the risk for them. I really appreciate you um, detailing this. I'm sure each of us as council members is getting questions from our constituents, and this is really helpful information. Thank you. Council Member Tall. How, how do we find out, e even though this disease obviously knows no borders, uh, I know that the county health department has issued a list of cities that are uh, affected by this directly if someone shows up. How do we find out if someone in San Marino gets uh, COVID-19? Um, we don't. Uh, it, it's protected health information, um, so they won't tell us. 
Um, well, but they 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 are they are telling us. They I, I saw the list that came out yesterday. Oh, you mean we'll know that uh, based on the press releases that if we had somebody that they're aware of that's in our city, uh, but that's the route of information that we're. They, they won't tell us who or where or anything like that. And, and I can appreciate it. So the only way that we find out is through the same. The, the, we as a city find out is the same way the public will find out in general. That was uh, actually a, yesterday's press release was actually a surprise to many of us that they published that information without any sort of um, you know, warning or, or something else because I think people find that information useful that, that they have or have not somebody in their city. Uh, although it doesn't mean much, no. it is useful and, and can be comforting uh, but that was really sent out without any warning to us, and I expect we're going to see uh, many more of those. But but as far as an individual living on a street, um, no, and I and I understand why they wouldn't uh, put that information out because it is protected. In in, in it, having that information and whether or not we repeat that information online, uh, direct people to the county health may be important because. There is a general fear out there, and and uh, there there's a panic, and I think people would like to know generally if we've got someone in town. Their reaction to that we don't know, but perhaps we should find a way, uh, as part of this whole process, to direct people, and we may already online to these uh, press releases, so people could come and find that out. Uh, number two. Can I just add something to that, Councilman Michelle? Um, the release that the Department of Public Health put out is sent to anyone who subscribes to their mailing list. When we found out that they released that sort of information yesterday, we've done some additional subscriptions. So I am now subscribed to getting those, and we have taken the liberty of subscribing the five of you to those. So if you get a confirmation email from LA Public Health, please do not unsubscribe, unless you are not interested. Um, and what I was just asking Chief Wade is, I, I believe that that information is available to any member of the public who wants to sign up for those alerts. Um, we will verify whether that's the case or not and put information up there as some of our resources. We have gotten into the situation now where every time we do an update, we try to include some of the recent messages that have come out, whether it's number of cases or whether it's new direction that's been given. Uh, if you have visited our coronavirus webpage recently, you, you know there is a lot of information on there. It's a little overwhelming right now. So our community engagement manager is actually looking at ways to revamp that website. But I think we're, we're getting close to a point where we're not going to be able to repeat everything that other agencies are doing because it's just so much. We're going to try to get some useful links up there, and if it is in fact something that members of the public can subscribe to as well, which we suspect it is, we'll add that link too. Yeah, that, that would be important. Uh, people just thrive for information. What they do with it is up to them. But we should at least be that 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 uh, a, a point of contact for that information to the extent possible. And I understand that there's a lot of different messages. That way, they won't rely on Facebook uh, for their information, which can sometimes let's say be misleading. Um, secondly, we have a disaster council, or a dis uh, who's, who are the members of those? I know that the, the two of you are, but who else, just so the public knows? Uh, it's actually written in the code as two council people. And, and who are those two council people? We've, um, I've addressed this with two councils. Um, the previous one when I was here when I got hired, and uh, during the presentation that I've given to many of you, and I didn't get an overwhelming response um, of interested people. I'd be more than happy to do that if it does if it does come out. I know is it the mayor, one other council, or two people other than the mayor? I believe it's two council people. Okay, uh, hold on, and they have those And I didn't know if we had those. As, uh, I think it's, you, you're looking for it. I think it's. Myself. Good point, if I um, City Guard, do you recall if this is one of the committee appointments that we made? Yes, I think it is. According to our code, uh, the two members of the City Council would be appointed by the Mayor. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I was looking for that list today, and I, and I, I don't know if you, if you had made those appointments. But if not, perhaps you can make those appointments at some time during your future. 
Finally, could you uh, give us an example um, of the uh, of any of the limits of the power for the designated um, uh, health official or under this uh, under this new proclamation? Because I do know that we have an article within our code that does talk about some limits on the power under a, a state of emergency. Uh, could you give us an example on, on limits? How, you know, I know that, for example, the, the, the um, planning departments have been closed on May 5th. And that was news to me, and, and why May 5th? And is that something that they could do unilaterally, or is that something that would the, the council ultimately have to come back and, and affirm? So with a local emergency in place through the resolution today, what that essentially does is gives the city manager, who is the emergency services director, the authority to act immediately for protection of life and safety. So she can, under um, that authority, do things such as um, close down the planning department except for appointment. She can close down certain establishments. but with those decisions it would always have to come back to be ratified by council and with that the council can go ahead and ratify her entire decision part of her decision or none of her decisions so there is still a follow-up to that but with the local emergency it gives the city manager again as a emergency services director the ability to immediately act when council is not in session and let me just add that that will be um, within seven days it would have to we'd have to call a meeting and come back to ratify so it's a fairly short as well way to go about the ratification process in the sense that we have to come together and on a date within those seven days once she takes action to then discuss and just ratify them is is there anything that's been done to date that will need to be ratified uh, under I, I know we're approving this before, but I do know that there have been decisions that have been made, probably with concurrence of the mayor, I don't know, but if if someone could provide me, or the public generally, with some of the things, the decisions that have been made by uh, the, the city manager that uh, might ultimately, within either today or within the next seven days, have to be ratified. So certainly I can go through the list and then our city attorney can weigh in. Also, to go back to your earlier question, uh, you did appoint two council members to the Disaster Council. It is one of your liaisons, and I'm so close to having the actual names. I'll get those as soon as yeah, I can. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't find the list. I found the last time that you adopted the list. I'm on the council agenda now, so I'm very close to having those names for you momentarily. But the list of decisions that have been made uh, over the last several days have included the cancellation of all non-essential events. That included commission meetings. Um, <clears throat> obviously, city council is not part of that, and some planning commission meetings will still need to go ahead as essential. Uh, we also made the decision to. Oh, very good. Uh, disaster council. Uh, delegate Shepard Brahmi and uh, alternate Edie. Thank you. Um, Dr. Merlo, you were, may I ask a question to what you just said? Non essential um, commission and committee meetings. Um, I think it would be helpful to get a little bit more spelled out on that because some of us were surprised to hear that there may be um, the planning commission meeting, yet they may be canceled for an extended period of time. So I think definition as we go along will be helpful. And along that same note, um, you know, recommended, um, mandated, um, discouraged, we really, um, citizens have asked me if we could get a publication of what that those terminologies uh, look like because people just are really unclear. Thank you. Sure. Uh, the cancellation of all events um, is all events. So all recreation events, all library events, all city-sponsored events, um, everything that was in the recreation brochure essentially is not happening uh, through April 30th. We say non-essential to permit a little bit of flexibility. If it turns out that there's something essential, I can't possibly predict everything that might come up. But at this point in time, all events have been canceled. There have been none that have been deemed to be essential. Uh, and it may make sense when I get to the Planning Commission, which is why that commission is meeting one. So those events and meetings uh, included all commissions, 
It did not include the city council. Your business is essential to the operations of the city. Uh, Although many may disagree. It's certainly so. not me, council member. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, the planning commission meeting that is going forward is going forward because there are certain projects that by law require decisions within certain time frames. And so if we have those kinds of situations, that is deemed essential. We're having those meetings. But if we are able to cancel meetings because there are no time frames governing projects, then those meetings will be canceled as well. Very helpful for the public to hear. Great. Can I also add one thing? Sure. Because part of it also, sorry, depends on uh, my understanding is the Governor Newsom's orders. And as they come down, they will relieve perhaps some of those deadlines and guidelines. So that may affect just in terms of planning commission or the rules with which our uh, building and planning department operated on. I assume that those are going to change, but we have to have instruction um, from the state government in order to find relief. So I expect that that will be something we update on our website. And we also didn't say the most important part, I think, is that we're now having a new information protocol where our community can go to the website every day and get the, the let's say, uh, changes and look back at the others, but we're going to try to do that every afternoon before the close of business at 4, so we can direct our residents there, and I don't want that to get lost, because there are a lot of questions, but there's a very lot of this information available to everybody, all spelled out in great detail, and it's going to keep changing, so I just suggest that we really tell everybody in town to look there first, and then make your calls to the appropriate person, if more information like what's the definition of non-essential those are all good questions but look first on our website on the web page about coronavirus you know, we certainly underscore that things are changing to get back to councilmember Tall's question just to finish off the list of things that we've right. done okay so the cancellation of all events and meetings that are non-essential uh, with the exception of city council obviously which is deemed essential and some planning commission meetings until further notice um, we have concluded all of those at least through April 30th, although of course we'll be revisiting as we go. Uh, Stoneman has been closed to the public. If there is business that can be done via phone or online, that's certainly possible. Staff is still there responding, but there is no public access to the building and no programs being run. Uh, same situation for the Corolla Public Library. The building is closed to the public. Um, <clears throat> staff is still here working on projects. If there are, is business that can be done over the phone or via online, you can't, you can't check books out over the phone, for example, but if there's any other kind of information that the public needs, they can certainly call. Um, <clears throat> at the moment, Lacey Park remains open. I would highlight what Chief Arita said, that we are monitoring everything, and if people are sensible about the use of Lacey Park, then we would love to be able to keep it open, but we'll be monitoring that situation. And then, um, to the best of my recollection, last but not least, the only other measure that we've issued is uh, the limitation at City Hall to public access in person, um, with the exception of essential services. Again, mostly that's framed around planning issues that have things that are permitted to be to be done, uh, not general questions, for example. And we could potentially see maybe an essential service being something around a public records request. But uh, those all services will all be provided by appointment only. And then, of course, the fire department and the police station will be available for emergencies as well. Did, um, I, I'm comparing the resolution and what the mayor uh, stated. It says to that uh, under our ordinance, the uh, person, in this instance, uh, the California Emergency Department, in this instance, you, um, will make and issue rules and regulations on matters, uh, matters reasonably related to the protection of life uh, and properties affected by such emergency. Provided, however, such rules and regulations must be confirmed, and it says the earliest practical uh, time by the city council. The mayor suggested that was seven days. Is that the outset, mayor? I'm sorry, yes, it, that it, was my understanding is most other cities and the guidelines that we were going to follow would that seven, it would be within seven days within that we seven. would be called to a meeting periodically uh, should other measures be enacted and then we would ratify those or review those as we are today and discuss them amongst ourselves and either ratify or modify and then put a new um, plan in place. Okay. So. Uh, thank you.
And just to add to that, there are specific things that are called out in that same municipal code section, which is uh, 40302. If you just go down a little, a little further, um, if there are actions taken by the emergency service director, such as to declare hours of curfew or to temporarily uh, close certain business establishments, those specifically call out within our code that um, there needs to be ratification within seven days. All those specific items. Okay, I have no further questions. Thank you, and thank you for your hard work. Vice Mayor Yudi. Uh, I too thank you for your hard work on, on this one, and it was helpful to get the clarification of, of the scope of authority. So, it's what the city manager feels is necessary for the protection of life, health, and safety, and it needs to be ratified by the council within seven days, right? So the the ratification within seven days are specific regulations such as curfews and to close certain business establishments. Uh, one of the questions that Councilmember Tall asked was for a current list of measures that have been taken by the city manager in her capacity as an emergency services director. That would fall under the as soon as reasonably practical, practicable by this, the city council to ratify. So in an abundance of caution, I would actually recommend that since we've got council here today, that those four or five things that the city manager just read off also be ratified by the city council today. And then I, I believe if we're successful in flattening this curve, that this emergency could go through the summer easily. Um, and I think that's a long time for some of the non-essential departments and functions. So I think we're going to need to move into the ability to have virtual meetings fairly quickly so that Planning Commission and the others can, can continue. Um, and then a question for for city manager and staff, if the library and rec department remain closed through th through summer, what are the thoughts and plans for employees and layoffs and large enough for their well being? That's a great question, Vice Mayor. Thank you for asking. Um, at the moment, we have communicated to our employees that we're going to be uh, interpreting our leave policies very liberally. The mayor's been very supportive about this, and we appreciate that. Um, normally, when it comes to things like sick leave. Uh, you're only entitled to take sick leave if you are, in fact, sick, or if a member of your immediate family is sick. Those are the general guidelines for that. We've communicated to employees, and we'll be following it up with some written communication today or tomorrow, that if, for whatever reason, they aren't comfortable coming to work because of the COVID-19 virus, they are in, they, they are welcome to use their leave time and be at home. Uh, of course, we have great employees, and um, all the employees are tempering that with the fact that we are disaster workers. Um, we all got into this business so that we could help the community, and uh, when you have a disaster and you wake up in the morning and something's going wrong, I think most people think, what's my government doing for me? So that's us, um, and I know that's why I got into this business and why executive team got into this business and all of our employees got into this business, so they know that they have a responsibility to the community and if at all possible to come in and, and help us make it through this. Uh, but we do have those leave provisions available for them should they need them right now. Um, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I, I can't see into the future where this is going to go and part of the exercise here is to plan as much as we can and be flexible as much as we can. If a situation like this goes on for two, three, four months, things are going to have to change with respect to employees. I don't know what that looks like today. Um, but we're talking about it regularly, we're having conversations, we're getting input from employees. Two, three, four months from now, we may also have a much higher level of employees who are actually sick. And the decisions, some of which may get made for us. So um, we are in constant conversation about that. Thank you. Um, I did have uh, one question just generally, and <coughs> It had to do with the statement um, by a chief, I know we had discussed this, but for the community, when LA County uh, Department of Health declared a state of emergency, and that did apply to all cities, but then there's under the LA County, in the LA County area, but subsequently a lot of cities, and now we are considering adopting our own declaration. So what has changed, not in terms of what's happened in the world, but 
what has changed in terms of why do we need to do this additional step for everybody to understand um, what are the important things that we're doing here today. I understand um, the legal uh, ramifications, so to speak, but what are the real things that you're looking to get out of here, out of this for our community and for our staff as well? So part of this might be a, a Stephanie question, but the reason for an individual city to proclaim in addition to the county uh, uh, reasons are really several. Uh, one, it does confer additional authorities in the director of emergency services, the city manager, that otherwise um, they don't have uh, with just the county proclamation. Um, secondly, if in fact we ever, we ever uh, recover monies, one of the justifications that we would not otherwise have would be um, you guys didn't even declare a state of emergency in your city. How can you be asking for additional monies? Um, and the third. Excuse me. God bless you. We got an hand sanitizer in the back. Um, so the third would be, which doesn't apply really in this case, if the county was turned down for resources, recovery, money, we could still argue on our own merits as a city. But uh, in this case, the state's already uh, declared an emergency, the president's declared an emergency, so that really is, isn't applicable here. So it sounds like we're getting our place in line. Should we have additional costs, whether it's staffing or supplies and, and needed, that also helps? Uh, we've um, opened accounts at the direction of uh, the city manager. We've opened accounts specific for this uh, emergency. Uh, so we're already tracking some of our uh, supply requests and, um, and also uh, the limited staffing costs that we've had so far. Correct. Okay, thank you. And also, I don't know if our city attorney wants to weigh in and help the public and myself understand a little bit more about the importance of doing this stuff. And Chief Rueda did a very great job of providing a fairly comprehensive list of what this resolution will do for the city. One additional point that I wanted to make is in our city code section 020605, having declared a local emergency also triggers the emergency procurement section, which means that if there is some sort of need for an immediate um, procurement of services and goods, there is a waiver of that typical bidding requirement. However, as with all the other emergency service director actions that are taken on, during a local emergency, there is a comeback provision meeting within, in this instance, within 14 days, uh, those actions would need to come back before council with a full report about what was spent, and then with a four-fifths vote, they, we can either continue it or we can con to continue to provide those services or come back on a rolling basis to see if those services are still needed. All right, or as well as if there is an expense that's made um, by the city uh, director of emergency services. So what would happen at that within 14 days after that procurement, what would need to be done is a city manager would have to come back and provide a full report on the emergency, including an explanation of why um, that emergency didn't permit a delay and why it was needed immediately. And then from there, and at each meeting thereafter, the council would revisit it until the local emergency has been lifted. Thank you very much. That helps. Um, also, I, I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Marlowe, at, as far as information and getting information out to the community, as we've seen, um, we've been posting and sometimes people aren't able to find it, but hopefully they will and, and more uh, publicity is better for directing people to our website. Do we have a time that you expect and when will daily updates start occurring? As well as uh, the third part of my concern is about Chinese translation. I know that we have a significant number now um, shut into their homes that maybe don't speak uh, English and so they're going to different sources and instead of perhaps checking some online sources it would be nice to have the official information and dual languages for our community. So I'm wondering what is the time frame that we can expect that and we can tell people to start looking for that on our website. All really important questions. Um, we have uh, actually at the mayor's suggestion we've changed the home page a little bit of the city's website. There is now a red bar 
I'm going to say two thirds of the way down the page. It's not miss. It, you can't miss it. Um, that's now driving people to the COVID-19 update pages as opposed to that pop-up box that was appearing in the bottom right. So um, the red certainly is more noticeable. Um, it's also red, which tends to typically connote emergency. Uh, and so I think also people might have gotten a little used to that, that pop-up box appearing at the bottom. So the red will be a little bit more difficult to ignore and a little bit easier to find. So um, it should be easier to get to, to get to those pieces of information. Uh, given the state of the situation and the fluidity with which things are changing, we are in that situation in every way where we are proverbially building the plane as we fly it. Uh, and so the daily updates are coming at the same time that we want to put together just a comprehensive introductory document of here's where we are right now. So uh, Community Engagement Manager Fowler is working on a comprehensive document that would include everything that the city has done, uh, where we are right now, and what's, what links and information are available to the other bodies that are also taking actions. We have a goal <laughs> of having that ready by tomorrow and going up on the website, and that would be the first document that we'll translate into Chinese. Uh, if the council is aware, we had proposed a very robust Chinese translation and engagement strategy for the next budget year. So although there was no money in the budget to do this this year, we already had some of the sources that we were going to use next year. So that's been uh, very fortuitous. And we have engaged them and gotten information from them on price quotes, how quickly they can turn things around, and so forth. Um, they have indicated to us that in a time crunch, uh, they can probably turn translated information around within about two hours. So on the one hand, that feels like a short period of time. On the other hand, that's actually quite a long time when we're trying to get updates out. So our goal, as the mayor indicated earlier, uh, coming out of our crisis communications committee, is to have updates go on the website every day at 4 p.m. That will probably start, I'm hoping, later this week. Uh, and the update will either have updated information or may say there's no new information. I, I can't foresee that happening anytime in the near future. Uh, but we'll have something there so people get accustomed to getting into the habit of going to the website at 4 p.m. and seeing whatever the most recent information is. We'll miss some information because to get everything posted at 4 p.m., translated into Chinese, which is our intention every day, that means that we'll need to be complete with our messaging by 2 p.m. so that there's time to get it translated. So any new information that comes out after 2 p.m. will not be included in that daily briefing, but would be included in the next day's briefing. So. I think the summary to your questions is we've made the website easier to access that information. We are trying to publicize it everywhere we can. Chinese translation will go into effect with this initial document and then all updates <coughs> subsequently. And we're hoping to uh, be complete with all of those within the next few days, certainly by the end of the week. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I also wanted to uh, thank you and Chief Rueda for doing an outstanding job as well as uh, the rest of the executive team and staff. I know that. It's been a lot of um, uh, quick, and, and our clerk as well um, have stepped up, and uh, um, Ms. Fowler for uh, making all this information available and out there to public. Um, it's been a big effort, and I know this has been nonstop, probably seven days a week, and even when some people were otherwise supposed to be out of the audit, uh, office or out of town. So I appreciate that everybody's really stepped up to this and, and done an outstanding job for our community. Information is a key part of that, and the care that you're showing and the efforts really make a difference. So I hope that that will continue. I know it will, and I hope it will be appreciated. Um, do we have any public comments? May I ask oh, um, sure. one other question? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to direct this to both the mayor and um, Dr. Marlowe. Um, do you have planned, following today's meeting, um, a joint communique with the public for those who are saying basically what happened with perhaps an explanation of what it meant to make this emergency uh, finding and to also um, assure them that working with Chief Rueda uh, we are planning ahead um, not into the huge distant future but we are looking at other possibilities and the third point I wanted to make um, in our web pages, um, if we could remind folks um, through the library that um, the library is always available for them to download books during this time. Thank you. Uh, we do have a communique planned for this afternoon. Uh, Ms. Fowler's already been working on it. She has a template ready. We're 
hoping that we can count on you to ratify the emergency decision. So uh, she's prepared an outline of the message that would go out later once we see what happens in this meeting in full. She'll complete the message and we expect that to be put on the website before the end of the day. Thank you. And, and just to uh, uh, further add, uh, I think that we had talked, uh, spoken amongst the emergency team about issuing um, some sort of YouTube, I don't know what you call it, uh, presentation um, that would include the chiefs uh, as well as Dr. Marlowe and possibly myself and another way to get the message out to the community about the steps that we've taken and directing them perhaps with something like the screen. And so we're going to also work on getting that up. I don't know the time frame, but we have spoken about that because sometimes it's also reassuring to, and informative and some people get their information that way as opposed to having to take that step um, of going to the web city website. So there will be a couple different ways that we're going to try to push information out to the community in the short term as well as in the long term as things develop and change. And I know that that's something that the emergency um, committee will be talking about what the most effective ways are doing that of messaging and uh, trying several different ways. I really apologize for this, but I have a couple of questions that have come up in the last few minutes that I'd like to have an opportunity to discuss with the city attorney. So I'd like to ask, could, would you be willing to maybe call a five-minute recess? Sure. And are there any other questions at this time from council members? Or we'll take a recess at this time. And we'll also lead in if you want to speak. <laughs> Thank you. I think there is a, um, there was discussion, so I'd ask city attorney, uh, please. Let us know. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to make a quick point of clarification. I just quickly reviewed the current list of emergency measures that have already been taken, and they all deal with either city facilities or city events, and those actually all do fall under the authority of the city manager. So for at least those lists of measures, it's not necessary for the council today to ratify those. However, under section um, 4, 040302 of the Municipal Code subsection G7 and 9, which deals specifically with express things that the city needs to ratify, such as a regulation regarding curfew or a regulation regarding closure of certain businesses. Those are things that the city council under a municipal code would have to ratify within seven days of such order. So just a point of clarification in case that wasn't abundantly clear earlier. It made it more unclear, if I may. Um, the closure of City Hall, is that something that the city manager could do without the approval of council? Would that be, uh, because I was I was surprised it was closed till May 5th. I thought would it, it would have been done, or the, the posting this morning on the, so just to be clear, I guess we'll go back and change our, change our signage. The decision that we made was to close it through March 31st and reconsider as we get closer. Okay. That, well. Is that not what the building that, is? But that's the right way to do it. it. I believe it said May 5th. I received a photograph. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Director Cervantes is telling me that that's, that's a different sign on the front door that says that plan, the plan check consultation hour that normally takes place on Tuesdays has been suspended until May 5th. That's not the public limitation on City Hall. Those are two separate things. Well, n yes and no. I mean, if, if people are going to City Hall for plan check, it's the same thing. Um, would that be a regulate? It just This is just an example, but I, I would think that that would be something that at least the City Council would be brought in on to discuss, not necessarily ratify, but discuss, because I agree it should be done incrementally. Um, and I was concerned when I saw that, but... So the plan check service is something that we do with the vendor, and that's something that we started at staff's discretion. And so we've simply removed that one-hour consultation with the vendor, the contractor who comes out and does that plan check review. It's not plan check submittal. It's... That they do... Conversation, okay. conversation with the plan checker. So oh. that piece has been suspended a little bit longer because it requires somebody else coming out and so forth. That's separate, and... Quite frankly, it's probably superseded by the, the bigger decision that we made about City Hall. We probably don't need four signs on the door communicating roughly the same message. It's, it's just a unity message that should be clear if people are confused enough about what's happening. Thank you. 
And can I ask a follow-up question to that? Um, in the closing of City Hall, I, you know, I certainly res respect the city manager's discretion. Um, how um, will employee issues be handled in the future in terms of being present at work or what the, what the rollout of that would look like? So first I want to clarify, we're, we're working very hard to not say the closure of City Hall. City business is still going on, city employees are still working, members of the public are still permitted to come in, albeit with an appointment for essential services. For things that are not essential services, we still answer the phone, we still respond to emails, so City Hall is not closed. City so, Hall, I just, just so if I were to open the door, what happens? It is not accessible to the public in person. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I, this this is not so much my message back to you. I just right. want to be sure that, as Council Member Talsley, we're clearly messaging in a unified way that it's not a closure of City Hall. We're still providing services. But that's helpful to me if I'm going to come and walk into City Hall to know that I, I yes, just don't, can't. Don't you? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm the public in everything I'm asking. Understood. And we're going to continue to message about that in as many ways as possible. Uh, the answer about employees and what we're doing really goes back to the question that Vice Mayor Beatty asked. It's a day-by-day -day basis. At the moment, what we've done for employees is we've sat down with uh, each of the people in each respective department, gotten a sense of whether people think that they're going to be coming to work or whether they're going to feel the need to use some of their leave time. At the moment, we're still solidly staffed. Um, at this point, we don't need to make any service disruptions directly as a result of staff absences. Of course, we could get there at some point. If enough people are infected by the disease or concerned about it and end up at home, we may end up needing to curtail city services, not because I make a decision as city manager that I want to stop those services, but simply because we have no one to provide them. We aren't there today. Um, we are in a marathon, not a sprint. Um, more things will be revealed. Employee situations will change. Services will shift. We are, we are in this for the long haul and uh, each day we'll be making whatever decisions seem appropriate for the well-being of both our employees, but also, of course, for the community. Thank you. One last question as it relates to this. Is there a uh, continuity plan in place with respect to the uh, authority under the resolution? For example, if you were to fall ill, um, who then would... I, I know that our code discussed a continuity plan with respect to this, but perhaps we should make allow the public to understand what it is. No, that's a great clarification. The municipal code does specify, and that is our plan. Um, the person who uh, takes over as director of emergency services should something happen to me as the assistant city manager, as of course you know, we don't have an assistant city manager. That's not a budgeted okay, position. Okay, so let's not confuse So, who, who uh, will so that will go away. I just in case you're looking at the code, that will not be relevant. The next person who steps in is the fire chief, okay. and that will be the next person who steps in. Behind the fire chief, it is the police chief. And to that question, um, are employees being cross-trained for essential duties for things such as payroll in every way possible? Excellent. Thank you. Do we have any further questions from council members? Seeing none, we'll open it up to public comment at this time. Any of the public here? <laughs> no questions? Uh, as well as online? Do you not have any uh, requesters to speak online? All right, thank you. Um, I'll close public comments and bring this back to council for discussion. Do we have any other comments among council members? I just have one comment. I, I would like the declaration or the resolution to specifically for, for people's better identification of the, uh, of the powers and authorities uh, under this, that we specifically reference uh, the extension and limitations in our uh, ordinance uh, just by number so uh, we we talk about that it's going to be done under our uh, under our ordinances let's see um, it's further proclaimed in order that the existence of this local emergency the powers functions and duties of the city's director of emergency services the city manager the right. city the toward the end city ordinance and yeah, actually the, referring the, to specific ordinance on number. the back page one two right. three fourth one that we specifically reference the city ordinances, um, and I know it is uh, Article Three. Yeah, I mean just to reference oh, Article Three. You're talking about right? Yes. So that people can identify without having to uh, go through our code and try to figure it out themselves. 
Thank you for that amendment. Anybody or change? Uh, anybody else have something to add to the actual uh, text of the resolution? Seeing no further comments, um, City Attorney, I know you're feverishly writing uh, the numbers in at this time, so then we would be adopting it, and you can read in that change to re accurately reflect the sections that you, you referenced particularly today in our discussion, because that helps um, the public understand as well what would be the scope and the ratification process, et cetera, right? Um, you want to read ahead? <laughs> So in addition to uh, removing that whereas clause that I previously discussed, that seventh whereas clause regarding March 16, 2020, uh, the amended resolution would also, on the second page, on, on the fourth, it is further proclaimed in order that the existence of this local emergency line, we'll go ahead and amend that to read, it is further proclaimed and ordered that the existence of this local emergency the powers, functions, and duties of the city's director of emergency services, the city manager, the San Marino Disaster Council, and the emergency organization of the city shall be those prescribed by state law and the city's ordinance, resolutions of the city, approved emergency plans, including Article 3 of Chapter 4 of the San Marino Municipal Code. So do I have a motion to adopt the resolution as amended? So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. A roll call, please. Councilmember Huang? Yes. Councilmember Jacobowski? Yes. Councilmember Tall? Yes. Vice Mayor, Vice Mayor Yudi? Yes. Mayor Shepard Romney? Yes. Thank you. Do we have, we do not have, since it's an emergency, a public comment period, but not necessary. Are there any public comments online from anybody? We do not have any requests to speak at this time. Thank you very much. All right, then I will adjourn the meeting uh, at this time and hope that uh, things you can hope for the best and prepare for the worst. And I think we heard that today loud and clear, and we have extremely dedicated staff working to protect the well-being of our community. So we'll move forward with that. Thank you.